second to four. Oh, for New York Giants fans, you were all hoping our quarterback falls to six. This is Tim New York Giants trade talk powered by online Big Blue LLC. I want to talk about a way the Giants could potentially fix their offense in the first two rounds and cause minimal damage to the salary cap and cause minimal damage to their draft assets. I've been thinking about this. I've been examining the salary cap and we're going to do a salary cap video again a little bit later because of the fact that there, there is, there is talks, there's rumor. The salary cap's going to be at its all time high next year, but it's really still not really going to help the giants much if any. And, and I think we got to figure out a way to make some moves and stop making lateral moves, make some moves that can improve the offense within the first two rounds now, it's, it's going to take some wheeling. It's going to take some dealing. It's going to take some luck. It's going to take some hope. And hopium is the drug for all giant fans. We know that. We've talked about hopium. Zach Attack has talked about hopium all the time. We got a little article today on NewYorkGiantsLive.com talking about hopium and the New York football giants because we got to do something. We got to be something different because even with the salary cap going up to an all-time high, the Giants are still going to be in the doldrums because, you know, you look at the fact that you look at the picks that the Giants have. We're going to be sitting there at 639, 47, 70, 108, 140, 185. There's some good numbers there. There, you're, you're looking at having three picks. Well, actually, four picks in the top 70. Now, the defense has some holes, the defense has some issues, but we all know. There's there's an issue at quarterback, there's an issue at wide receiver, and there's an issue at guard. Tim, but how can you fix all this? You're the mad genius. You're the mad scientist. I don't know about that. But you know what? I got a plan. I you know, I've seen it. Oh, you see the light? What light? Have you seen the light? Now you're asking, how are you going to do this, Tim? I'm going to find, I, I am going to lay out a plan right now to get a wide receiver, a quality big wide receiver, a quarterback, and a guard all within the first two rounds. Also, for those that do not know, do not know this at this point, I'm good on New York Giants live.com. We have articles daily now written by yours. Truly. We also have online big blue replay radio where you can listen to all the podcasts. We're actually going to be bringing in some new talent as well. It's going to be like a little radio program. That's we're going to talk about the giants. We're going to talk about the Rangers, the Knicks, the Mets and all that fun stuff. So just go to the site. It's www. New York giants, straight talk. New York Giants, New York Giants live.com. I don't know how my own website is. So listen, you need a quarterback, you need a wide receiver and you need a guard and you need them now because I'm not sitting there and I'm not going to take, I'm not taking Evan Neal and I'm not moving him. I find your lack of faith disturbing. There is no lack of faith, Darth. I believe in Evan Neal. I don't know. I don't believe as much as I believed in Andrew Thomas, but I believe in Evan Neal, but you need a wide receiver sitting at six. is It's just such a weird, <laughs> When we won those meaningless games with Tommy DeVito, it, it was just such one of those things that you looked at it like, this is good. This is going to hurt. It was fun in the moment, but you looked at it going, this is going to hurt. And being in that sixth spot is, is, is kind of like taking your sister to the prom. You know, it's not a lot of fun because you have three quarterback needy teams ahead of you. You have to hope that the bears want to be trading that pick. And now if the giants can somehow get up and trade that pick or somehow up and get Justin Fields, I'm happy with that as well. But if we can't, we got to trade out of six. We got to move. We got to move out of that six and we got to build some assets. We got to get some assets. And the first, my first thought process is trading out of six. You're probably going to, you're probably going to have some takers in the lower half of the first round that want to move more towards the top spot and what they maybe want to go out and get a neighbors. Well, chippy, my neighbor, they maybe want to head that way. They may want to find some, there may be someone on the board that they're in love with. I'm talking about let's trade out of six. Let's drop anywhere between 19 and 26, 19. And well, I say 19 and 27. Cause you also have the Arizona Cardinals down there as well. So let's trade that. Let's trade back. 
let's trade back. Let's pick up another assets. If you're trading back out of six and you're trading back more, and you know, we trade into the middle half of the first, round. we trade from 15 to 17. That's fine. But you're trading back. You're probably going to pick up at least a three and you're probably going to pick up minimum of a five and then probably another pick as well. I would use the trade calculator, but it really depends on how badly someone wants that six pick, but let's trade out of that spot and let's grab a wide receiver right off the bat. And I've talked about this kid before, 6'4", 215 pounds on a Florida State. It's Keenan Coleman. Big target. Big time Plexigo Burris type wide receiver. Some people are going to say, well, Tim, that he, he's he's a little too high you know, in the, in the teens or the low 20s. No, I don't think he is. I think he's a good spot. I think, I think for his talent, he is what, I mean, you look at him, he's the prototypical physical wide receiver. Elite size, frame. Speed and athleticism. He's one of these kids that, you know, you, 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 you talk about, you know, we talk about Jalen Hyatt and his acceleration. We talk about his, his ability to change gears. Imagine if you had a wide receiver that was six, four and did the same thing. Six, four and has exceptional foot speed. And he's got lateral quickness, which means for a guy for his size and his frame, he's going to be able to get around the DB. You got to love that. His ball skills. You got to love him. I want to know why? Because he's strong. Listen to this. He's strong at the point of, a, at the, point of the catch. No one's going to take the ball away from this kid. He has that type of strength. And it's weird because if you watch some of the Florida State games, you look at this kid going, is he defying gravity? Can someone that size do this to contortion to go around and make these catches? And then he's a guy that's got that blend of, like I said, he's got that explosive. He's got that agility. He's got that physicality. He can overpower defend defensive backs. He's a threat after the catch. You're going to be looking at some yak with this kid. You know what? He, he is, I, I, he looks, I look at him. He, he is, he is the alpha male wide receivers. That's what he is. And you know what? I, you know what? I also really like Keenan Coleman a lot. He's a basketball player played under Tom Izzo. He's a basketball player. Antonio Gates was a basketball player before he was a tight end. Basketball players ha- have an understanding of how to use space and their bodies to get where they need to get to either get to the rebound, to get an open shot. And it showcases this kid's athleticism. Now, am I, there, 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 there are some, there are some, there are some, you know, not flags, but there are some things you need to work on. He's not, he's for a guy, his size, you would think he would have more of a, and this guy of his own physical prowess, you would think he would have the ability to work out as a downfield run blocker. You know, he's, he's really, he's really got to work in that. He really has to, he really has to work on that. And his routes, crispness, that's a good word. He needs to get a little bit more crisp on his routes. He's got to refine his technique a little bit. He's got to, you know, I, I like his footwork, but he needs a little bit of improvement. He's got to show some more consistency and he will be a more effective playmaker if we do that. But like I said, his physical size and strength, it, it's a dom- it could potentially be a dominating presence. I know some people have him taken in the second. I think he's actually going to come up the boards during the combines. And here's the good thing about this draft scenario. Okay, you don't want to take you don't want to take him there. You think you can take him in the second? Okay, we t- we take him in the second round. We got two sec we got two second round picks, and we just picked up another third, another five, and maybe a seven by making that trade. You know, we picked up we we picked up let's say the seventeenth pick. We picked up we picked up the seventeenth, the third, a five, and a seven as well. So we can trade back in. So if, you know, this is the thing. If you don't like it at that scenario, you're gonna like what the next guy's gonna do. Going into the second round, or even making the switch. I know it's a risk, but you grab Michael Penix Jr. You, I, 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 he looks like he is going to have a serendipitous fall. It's my quarterback. And if you guys do that, man, it's unfair. It is unfair because of the two knee surgeries. It is, it is unfair because people think he had a bad championship game. 
It is unfair for a lot of reasons, but the kid has got talent outside of uh, outside of Caleb Williams. I think he's going to be the most pro ready to start. I love when people are like, well, why should we listen to you? Cause you liked Malik Willis. Oh, okay. So all the people that like Tannehill, you know, Kiwi Smith, Baker Mayfield, you know, Johnny Manzo, Ryan leaf. <laughs> we should never listen to any of those analysts uh, or, 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 or Jimmy Clausen. We should never listen to any of those analysts again. Oh God, that was one of the stupidest things I ever fucking heard. But you grab the quarterback, you grab the guy, you you have to you have to overlook the thought process that he's going to get hurt, and you have to believe he's not going to get hurt. He's got a, he's he's got besides being a left hander, he's got everything you want besides the knees. He's got everything you want. He's a good kid. He's a leader on the field. He has all the ability. And you pick, you pick him up as well. Now you're sitting there with your two threes. I mean, excuse me. Yeah, your two threes and your two twos. And you're like, Tim, what, you were talking about we're going to get a guard as well. And, and you know what? That's what we're going to do. We are, we are going to go out and find the next, av- the next available or the best available guard that we can find. So who are we going with? We're going Graham Barton. Out of Duke. Some people have him going as high as the lower half of the first. Some people have him going as low as the se- end of the second. This is a kid that brings versatility to the trenches. 6'5", 314 pounds. I know I'm not big. I'm not big on two. I mean, he doesn't hit that. I always feel that especially guards, if they're over 6'5", have more of an issue getting out of their stance or getting into their stance. But he's 6'5". And like I said, he could be college 6'5", for all we know. 314 pounds. He, he is a kid. Again, he is an athlete. Some people say he's explosive off the ball. I like him because of the fact that he has range. He's got power. He's kind of gnarly. He's a finisher. He's strong. He's compact. He's one of those guys that you look at him and you say, that's an offensive lineman. And it's his flexibility. I'm going to say it again. Flexibility. You could put him at guard. You could put him at tackle. You could do a lot of things. And I love, like I said, I and he will learn with his athleticism because he is a guy that has that. He understands how to remain. We've talked about this before. We were hoping this with John Michael Schmidt because he was a wrestler. He understands, or we've seen him at Duke with an understanding of how he maintains leverage throughout his attack. He understands leverage, which is a big, which is a big thing. He's got these big oven mitts. He basically can just bear hug the rusher. Well, not bear hug because that would be a penalty, but he could, he can, he can engulf the rusher. And like I said, he's one of those guys that you, you like his physicality. He's, he doesn't seem to be like a Will Hernandez who, who was that physical, who was nasty, but Will Hernandez couldn't control it. This is a guy that looks like he can. He looks special. I don't know what the fuck you just said, little kid, but you're special, man. You reached out and you touched it by the heart. He also has experience at playing center. Think about that. Now, one of the things, the first things that people are going to point out about him is he's got, it's going to be the Justin Pugh effect. His arm length is too close. It's, it's a little, too, it's average. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. Does he have, does he have Mauler strength? Does he have this elite strength? No. But then again, like I said, he understands leverage. You get him in the weight room. You, you, you get him in there. You bulk him up a little bit. You don't, you don't, you don't do the, you don't do the Matt from Connecticut type thing, but you bulk him up a little bit. He is a guy that sometimes falls for the swim move. If you watch his film at Duke. He's one of the things that we talked about with Evan Neal. He kind of lurches at the point of attack. He does. He doesn't. He doesn't. Evan Neal at times doesn't attack the defender. He kind of lurches. This kid does. This kid kind of. This kid kind of does the same thing at times. But like I said, if you're hoping that you are getting this this great offensive line coach, you should be able to work with these players on this. But like I said, he, and you know, and, and as we talked about, he, he did pick up a couple, he did pick up quite a few number, not quite a few, but he did pick up a number of penalties um, 
in school because of the fact that he does have a, a, a propensity at times to wrap his arms around the opponents, around opponents, around, around the opposing players. So, I mean, he'll, he'll have to work on that. But like I said, he's, he's, he's talk about late. They're talking about late first round consideration. So here's the thing. You want to trade up in the first round to get him? You got multiple picks now. You got, you got two, 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 three, a five and an extra seven. Yeah. Why not trade back up? These are guys that you can interchangeably go after. Keenan Coleman, Michael Penix, and we just talked about it. The ground Barton. You get these three guys. You're already going to have trouble this year. Anyways, you have three guys. You can, if you could do this in the first two rounds and still have an, you still have that extra second, maybe in that extra third and you still go after some defenders, but you can have these guys as plug and play. They may not start out well immediately, but what rookies, not all rookies do. You're going to have to go through some growing pains, which is fine. You know, because we, we've said it before. I'm a karate man. All right. Karate man brews on the inside. Yeah. We bruise on the inside. So they're going to take their lumps. They're going to take their bruises. They're, they are going to go through the pain, but you're in the rebuild of a rebuild of a rebuild. So why not? It's a way to fix this team. It is a way not to compound your issues with your salary cap. And if you can grab one guy in the first two in the second, you're golden pony boy. Don't forget, go to New York giants, live.com. Read the daily articles. Also check out New York, check out OBB radio, OBB replay radio on the website as well. It's a lot of fun. We got a lot of fun stuff coming to the website. So make sure you look out for that. We got some other surprises coming up in the next couple of weeks. But that's why they're surprises. And as always, this is Tim. This is New York Giants. Right? Talk. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell because you want to know why. That'll be awesome.